when I released my album, like he has like, like email the president thing. Basically, I just sent him a message like, hey, here's my music. It would be awesome for you to check it out. And then like a few weeks later, like all of a sudden I got this phone call from, it said unknown caller, Washington DC. I get a call, it's like, is this Noah Gibney? And then I was like, yes. And then this person was like, the president would like to visit with you because he's going to be uh, coming to McCungie PA and he heard your music and loves it. Noah Gibney. What's up? What's up, bro? <laughs> Nothing much. I'm um, just getting ready to uh, hit the road in a few days um, because I'm going to be heading down to uh, Delaware to do a few shows. So I'm looking forward to that. Delaware. Is that, is that all your... Jeez, you know, I don't know why I can't speak recently. <laughs> like, is that the only state you're hitting up? Are you doing like a full tour or what's up? Um, we're going to be playing a little bit in uh, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania for the next uh, few days. So, right on. It's exciting. So, is this to, like promote the release of a record or are you just like doing your thing? It's actually like a couple of things. So, I kind of worked this out. So, now that uh, school's done for me for the summer, I now have a lot more free time. So, that means a lot more uh, shows that I can do. So I'm going to be doing a few shows with uh, Melody Trucks, who happens to be uh, the daughter of original Allman Brothers uh, member uh, Butch Trucks. So mm. that'll be exciting. So That's and we're going to be doing a few shows together. Yeah. So how'd you get hooked up with her? So actually, um, so I got hooked up with her through playing with uh, another band called the Fitzky Brothers, um, which are uh, two uh, brothers that are from Delaware, and I uh, kind of met up with them um, through like social media and stuff like that. And we're uh, gonna be like the backing band for her. So that's how, how this all came together, so. Killer, man. And so you're not that old, right? No, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, how long have you been playing for, man? But it's really not that long at all. <laughs> Since I was about like four or five. So I guess it kind of has been a so pretty like, decent amount of like time. Like 11, 11, yeah, 12 11, 12 years. Yeah, 11, 12 years. <laughs> Killer, man. You know, I saw you at, uh, I went to the uh, Habitat for Humanity Birdhouse Challenge. Oh, right. Yeah, that was at the uh, uh, Double Doubletree Hotel. Yes, yeah, so I was there, and I got a couple of birdhouses, but I saw you open up the whole show. Yeah. Yeah, my man Brad Wiseman was uh, announcing you guys and stuff, and I was nice. like, oh, this dude looks, dude looks, cool. Uh, looks pretty cool up there, but I I never thought you were only 16. <laughs> you definitely looked older to me from the stage. <laughs> that. Well, that's what actually a lot of people seem to say. Like, based on, like, my voice is kind of more mature. So, like, people always – it's funny. Like, at a few of the past shows, like, people, like, place, like, quote-unquote, like, bets on my age. And then, like, they'll be like, what's your age? What's your age? <laughs> that's happened a few times. No, well, it's cool. It was awesome. You guys did a great job. Uh, I enjoyed uh, all the tunes, which is pretty cool. And it was just – it was coincidental and fortunate for me that – uh, Sean got in touch with me. He was like, "Hey, you really got you know interview this cat Noah Gibney." <laughs> so that was cool. So thank you, Sean, if you're listening. He's probably yeah. listening. Too. Yeah, yeah, he probably. <laughs> yeah. He... So what? Um, I know it sounds like a cliche question, but you said you started playing four or five. Like, what was the motivation? Were you into music? Did your parents say, "Hey, start doing this instead," or you know what what goes on in that realm? Well, music was always in my house, um, and. Pretty much how I got into music was just by loving listening to music, too. Um, like, my dad um, and I would always, like, take a few, like, road trips and stuff like that and just listen to music. Like, whether it was, like, songs by, like, Bob Marley or, like, The Grateful Dead. Like, all kinds of different music. Um, and I definitely would say that my dad really kind of, um, and his musical taste inspired me uh, to learn music. And just by loving music um, inspired me to end up playing music, too, so... Definitely, I just always loved uh, listening to music, which then uh, transpired into me uh, learning how to play music. So, you know, I, I can tell you like the Grateful Dead, <laughs> your button <laughs> yes. downs, uh, yeah, all the teddy bears, man. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, thank you. Uh, it was your main uh, instrument, the piano. Yeah, that's what I started with, um, and I, I actually was, uh, actually no, I started with ukulele first. Um, when I was about like four or five and then later um, someone suggested that it would be a good idea for me to learn piano because piano is kind of like the fundamentals of like music theory is all on the piano so like after that that's when kind of with learning the piano that's when I like really really was interested in music and uh, trying to make that into a career so right on man um, when did you realize um, you were good enough I guess if you want to call it to 
start do, doing this for a career, like this is your future goal. So when you've realized, all right, I'm going to get to school probably <laughs> and then go hardcore on this. That's an interesting question. So I'd say like I always was like into it, like it, but when I, I really felt like I was getting somewhere was kind of when I was about like 11 or 12 was when I was like really realizing that like from like a realistic point that this was a career that I wanted to have. Um, and just by like getting compliments from like better musicians and stuff like that, that's when I was like really um, like, wow, I can do this as an actual career. So what were some of the uh, more influential names maybe that gave you those compliments? Well, I'd say um, like some of the local musicians, I'm trying to think of specifically, but, um, and it's actually like, Interesting. Like a lot of the people that seem interested in playing with me now are in my band. Like two names um, would be Chris Kerr and uh, Matt Cullen, who uh, started pl playing with me um, around three years ago. And uh, we started my first uh, band, the Noah Gibney Trio. So I'd say like that's when I had a band, I'd say like my own band. That's when I was like, wow, I'm really getting somewhere. So, yeah, that's when it all really kind of started taking off like even like another level like when i was like that's when it was like becoming a real career like not just like some kid uh playing mu music but as sort of just like someone who's trying to make a career out of it so that's kind of where that like next level took place right on and the dudes in your band are they your age or are they older? no they're all there like older musicians how yeah. old are those guys i think probably like in their 40s and 50s now. really but yeah, like I actually like that though, because they're very, very much experienced. Like they, like they were very much able to help guide me. If you know, like based on their past experiences, so they definitely have given me a lot, lot of great advice. So right on. So you got almost like uh, a couple dads, let's say on the yeah, road. Yeah, like mentors. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are you into, man? Like I know you brought up the Grateful Dead. You brought up Bob Marley, uh, but like you know, I was in a band. You know, when I was a younger oh, nice. kid. Yeah. And, but I was like inspired by Metallica, Pantera, like heavier music. Nice. What inspires you, man? Like what makes you want to like, you know, sit in front of that uh, piano and just start writing? Um, I'd say like for me, are you saying like what like inspired me to play or? Well, yeah, no, it sounds like a bad question. Cause I was like, what <laughs> bands do you listen to? But what inspires you to play? So I guess let's go two for like, what bands do you listen to? What bands do you really dig? And then we'll get into like what inspires you. Certainly. So I'd say like some older bands that I've really gotten into would be like the Allman Brothers, the Grateful Dead, um, the Beatles, Bob Marley, Bill Withers is another great artist. Um, like I'm trying to think of other like Otis Redding is another great uh, musician. Otis, Otis Redding, yeah, oh, like a lot so of that good. that '70s soul stuff mm -hmm. I really love. But then also there's some like really nice contemporary groups now that I'm found into as well. Like I'm trying to think. Are you familiar with the band Wolfpack? No, I don't think that, they're a great band that's out there. I'm trying to think what else is another. Yeah, freaking teach me, man, because I <laughs> keep listening to the old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're a good band. They're kind of like funk, I'd say, but it's they they have some really interesting music out there. So, a killer. Also, like I I love all kinds of different music. Like another musician that i love listening to is jack johnson oh i love jack yeah johnson. he just has like especially like when it's the summertime and we're at the beach that's yeah, like the, just the perfect, the perfect mood. soundtrack right yeah i was in central park a few weeks ago and, and uh, i was walking through there with my wife and i remember seeing him at like central park summer stage i'm talking like nice. years ago <laughs> man this is back when i still lived in new york it's a cool show to watch, man. I bet, it's, yeah. It's cool, and it's exactly what it sounds like on record is what you see in person. Nice, yeah. I haven't seen him yet. I want to go. We were hoping to go last year, but then I think he had uh, COVID, and then his show got postponed, and then I couldn't make it. But hopefully the next time he comes around uh, the area, we'll be able to see him play. So. Yeah, right on. What was the last show you went to? Uh, Dead & Company on uh, last Thursday. That was a, fr a freaking killer show. It was how is John Mayer? He's really awesome. He's just like, he's, it's very cool to see him like, uh, cause he, he basically kind of took the place of uh, Jerry Garcia who passed and it's kind of like his gig now. So it actually is the last tour of that group together. So it was just great to see him one last time. It was my third time seeing uh, dead and company, um, as that group. 
Um, and it just, it was an amazing concert and they played like all the songs I wanted them to play. It was, it was great. What's, uh, why are they breaking up or what's going on next? I think, well, so some, it's a mixture of like original members and, uh, some newer members, uh, that take the place of some of the people that uh, passed away or just aren't touring anymore. But basically like in the Grateful Dead, I'm not sure how familiar with, uh, the band you are, but. They're like the two main guys were uh, Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir. Mm-hmm. So basically, like now it's ju- in that Dead and Company, which is basically kind of like taking the place of the Grateful Dead. It's John Mayer taking the place of Jerry Garcia and Bob Weir. So like those are like the two like main people of the group. So I think Bob Weir is like kind of getting like almost like too old to tour or something like that. I think that's part of why. They are, uh, this is the last one, but they've been, I think they've been doing like this group for like, uh, I want to say like eight or 10 years now. So, oh, right on. Yeah, I'm a huge John Mayer fan. Me too. Um, I mean, I just dig the way that dude plays guitar, man. Right. It just, yeah. It's just, it's such a, I think he's inspired by Stevie Ray Vaughan. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Like you hear Stevie Ray in his playing like all the way, dude. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I really dig him. Um, so to go back to my other question, I guess what inspires you to sit down in front of that piano, man, and start, you know, writing? It always, like, for me, like, when I start writing songs and stuff like that, it's always, like, different. Like, I've never, I think I've never really written a song the same way ever, like, before, like, the same exact way. But I'd say what inspires me is, like, depending on, like, what I've been doing, like, in, like, my life, whether it's, like, being with people and like different stories and stuff like that. That's kind of what has inspired me and my songs and stuff like that. Just like kind of being like a storyteller. Um, and also like playing, playing music. It just always brings me so much joy just to like sit there and work out a tune and stuff like that. Like that's kind of like my, like almost like way of like coping with things or like almost like my meditation and stuff like that. So it's just, as always, I always find myself in a good mood when I'm playing music. So that's why I do that. <laughs> No, that's great, man. I mean, I'm, I just, you know, just talking to you now just kind of reminds me of being, you know, 16 year old myself. You know what I mean, I, I was just trying to learn how to play Metallica tunes, man. <laughs> when I was 16, that's all I was trying to do. Uh, but of course, I was doing a little bit of due diligence and uh, I was checking you out online and you got hooked up with G Love. Yes. So, how in the heck did that happen? <laughs> So this is actually a few years ago during the pandemic and G love was supposed to be in tour, um, in Japan, but then he got sent back home cause of COVID. So then he was kind of in more of like a creative mode and like looking to collaborate with some people. So I just hit him up in, uh, Instagram, uh, DMS and was just like, Hey man, it would be great to collaborate on some stuff. Um, and I just, I wasn't like thinking to hear back from him, but then like, literally like a few like hours after I saw and he was like man that would be awesome and then we started writing some songs uh over uh, zoom and that's kind of how we uh did the the songwriting and actually like my first lesson was on my 13th birthday with him where we were writing songs together and then we ended up writing like 15 songs together over the pandemic so it was it was so much fun and he just is such a nice like down-to-earth guy to uh be able to work with and it just was overall a great learning experience about like writing and working with other uh, professional musicians. So, so he just answered your DM. Yep. <laughs> and you, were, and he was like, "Yeah, let's write let's some tunes it. together." <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was that it, is killer, man. Because I mean, you 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 know you expect these uh, musicians and celebrities to just not even be the ones that are even answering their DMs. Right. Yeah. You know they have like yeah. assistants or whatever. Um, what. So what came about? Like, did you guys write a record or? Yeah. So basically we kind of wrote two records together. So we did one for that I released called the Serendipity Sessions, um, which was my debut EP, which I released, I want to say like a year and a half ago now. So, um, and then also we wrote a few like Christmas tunes for his Christmas record. So that was really nice for him to record songs that we wrote together. Um, and I actually got to play piano on uh, the record too. So that was really, really nice to uh, be able to play with or play on his record. So Wow, what'd you record? Uh, where'd you get to record those tunes at? So I actually have a, a home studio at my house. So like now with all the technology and stuff like that, like you can just like, so he sent me some tracks and then I just uh, 
recorded it at my home studio and then like sent it back to his uh, producer. So it's it's crazy that you can do that kind of stuff now. Like you don't even have to leave your house. I know you to don't. Collaborate. Man. You don't. And I, oh, I'm so jealous of that too, man. Because when when I was a kid, you know, you had to go to a studio. Right. Or you had like four tracks with a cassette in it. Yeah. Now it's the computers, man. You could just do anything from around the world. Yep. Yeah. Now they even have like Logic Pro on like your iPad now. Like you can like yes. literally just like everything's at your fingertips now. Yeah. Wasn't there like uh was the Gorillas? Didn't they record a whole record on like an iPhone or an iPad or something? I think that might have been. I I'm not too familiar with them, but I know Steve Lacey did that. He's a a new like contemporary artist yeah. who recorded like a whole album on his iPhone. Like that stuff just like fascinates me. Like that you can do that. Like you don't need this like massive like uh recording studio with all these different like buttons and stuff like that you can just all do it on your phone or ipad or computer i know it's 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 come a long way so quickly yeah. too yeah, you know, i'm only 44 so i mean i was in a band just 20 years ago so in 20 years you went from cassettes to just a freaking screen yeah where you just you know? tap stuff and can just plug and play it is insane man uh insane so um are you do you ever plan on playing live with G Love or like is anything like that? We ever actually happen? have before. Oh, you have. So I was actually able to sit in with him last year when he played at the TLA in Philly. Yeah. So that was that was an amazing experience. Like I had a feeling that he would so we he was able to give us tickets and I had a feeling like he might um decide to like want me to play. So we decided to like bring my keyboard and it, I like all of a sudden I got like a text like, "Hey, do you want to play a few songs?" And then it's funny because then my dad was just like sprinting back to the car with like a uh, keyboard case, and then it looked like almost like he was like carrying like a dead body. In, yeah. And then I like, just sprinting <laughs> down South Street, but it, it was an amazing experience to play with him because it like after when I got to see him last year, it's been like it was some time before I got to see him before, so definitely my playing has improved since the last time so it was just it was great to be able to play with him in front of his audience so how do you um how much do you feel you've improved from like 13 till even just today so much i'd say i even improved a lot in the last year so basically like i've just been keep, keeping on working and working and working and definitely i felt like some improvements and just like finding my weaknesses and strengths and just making them better um, and I've always had like the growth mindset kind of thing, like just to be better than the person you were yesterday. So I've just like kept on doing that. And that's where I found the most growth. And I definitely, it definitely shows like, it's just, it's always funny looking at like old videos of like little Noah. It's just <laughs> like, cause you're so big now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like just the other day, there was like a father's day thing I did at the, uh, Reading Philly stadium like five years ago. It's like, Oh my gosh, how did anyone ever listen to that? Five years ago, I see we're eleven. Yeah, <laughs> see that's insane. Like that's so awesome to see uh, young musicians. You know, I was watching this TikTok the other day. This kid was like eleven, and he was doing the solo for like an event Sevenfold song. Wow. And I was like, I can't even do that now. And this dude's eleven. <laughs> I sent it to my buddy, and he texted me back. He just wrote, "I quit." You know, it's insane. I feel like yeah, I feel like kids. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like they're just more advanced these days. It's not like when you were like when I was eleven. You know, like. The kids are just, I don't know, evolution, something. Well, I think part of it, too, is this whole social media thing that, like, people didn't have, like, I don't know, like, 20, 25 years ago. Is that, like, now, like, to see, like, like there's so much more information you can get online. Like, you can literally just, like, scroll through YouTube and just, like, learn a bunch of stuff. Like, it's just, like, things are, things now are, in, like, you can literally learn anything on YouTube right now. Like, it's just... It's crazy. And I think that's part of why there's so much more people um, like desired to like learn their crafts and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's no reason why you can't literally learn anything. Right. Like you just got to <laughs> go on your computer or your phone, go to YouTube, type in whatever it is, and it's right in front of you. Yep. Yep. I love it. Me um, too. So I got one more thing. <laughs> you met the president. I did. How did that happen? It's a crazy story. <laughs> yeah, because I want to hear it. So um, this was like about a year ago um, when I was able to meet him. So when I released my album, I don't even know why I did this, but I decided to send uh, to his website. Like he has like, like email the president thing. Like I'm sure he probably gets a bunch of emails, but basically I just sent him a message like, hey, 
here's my music. It would be awesome for you to check it out. <laughs> like, I don't even know why I did this, but I did. And then like a few weeks later, like all of a sudden I got this phone call from, it said unknown caller, Washington, DC. I was like, it's, you know, those spam calls, you just don't answer them. I was like, you know what? I might just take this one because why not? And then I get a call. It's like, is this Noah Gibney? And then I was like, yes. And then this person was like, the president would like to visit with you because he's going to be uh, coming to McCunji PA and he heard your music and loves it and would love to visit with you. And then my, it's funny, like I got off the phone and I told my parents that and they're like, this is a scam, blah, blah, blah. And then, well, then we re researched it and researched the person that uh, sent, sent the phone call over and it, it was legit and it seemed he was coming to McCunji PA. So we're like, sure. Well, because the reason why my parents were like scared about it was because like they asked for like your like a bunch of like information, like social security. Of course. They needed to do that because they have to make sure that you're like not like a crazy person that would be a, thre a threat to the president. But basically, so we did that and then we decided to go. It was like a Wednesday in, I want to say like July when this happened. And it was just nuts. Like it was, it was funny. Cause like when we got there, like the secret service, like, sw like it, they're everywhere, everywhere. They're like in the trees. It's like everywhere. <laughs> like everywhere you look, there's secret service, but there was like so many like background checks you had to go through. And I remember, like, they gave us this, like, well, he was giving a speech there. So, like, there were people that were there just for, like, the speech, just to see him, like, that might have gotten it uh, through, like, their company or something like that. But we got, like, a few people got these red wristbands, and we were like, what does this mean? And then, like, it was, like, this person was, like, all the red wristband people, like, come here. And then we, like, did this, like, almost like path through the McCungie, uh Mac truck plant, which was where the uh, speech was held. And then all of a sudden there was like this waiting room, like to meet the president where he was doing a meet and greet. Like, oh my gosh, it was just like, it was insane. And then like all of a sudden more secret service swarmed. And then we heard like President Biden's voice, like in the background, like, and then all of a sudden he was like, I was like, oh my gosh, he's here. And then like all these people were like, it was almost like a photo line to meet him. I um, mean, like all these people, like I think the former governor, uh, Tom Wolf, I think that's his name. He was there. And then also now, now Governor Josh Shapiro was there as well, too. But it was cool to just even meet those guys, too. Um, and then all of a sudden, like we were able to meet the president. He was just like, again, he was like just like a down to earth guy. And he was just like a great guy to just like have a conversation to. Like I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm meeting the president. Like he just was like an average average guy that happened to be president and it was just but it was just amazing and it was cool him telling stories too like i didn't know this but his father is a music a saxophone player too like he was like telling me all these stories about like him like practicing saxophone it was just it was great to have a conversation with him and it it was certainly a great experience too so and also like this last part too like i was i handed him my cd um to like for maybe for him to sign it. And I was thinking like, I don't know if they're going to let this happen. Cause they have to like, make sure that it's not like take precautions. Right. Like it seems to be like a theme of the thing, but, and then, so I handed him one of my CDs signed and then eventually, so we were heading back to uh, see the speech and then all of a sudden these people were shouting, no, no, like I was like, did I do something wrong? Like I was like getting all right in the face. And then there was the CD that he signed and it says, remember me when you hit the charts. <laughs> it was just, a, it was amazing experience. Um, and certainly a once in a lifetime experience that I'll never forget. So yeah, I would say so, man, that's killer. So what are your goals, man? What are your plans? What is, what does Noah want to achieve? Well, I definitely want to make a career out of music. Um, and I think what I'd like to do is uh, go to the Berkeley College of Music. And then that's kind of where what I'd like to do is uh, like figure out what field I want to be in, whether it would be like a performing artist or producer, songwriter. And I think that's what college will be good for me is to explore what like professional career that I want to be in. So awesome. Man. Um, so Berkeley. So that means you'll be going there in about what, two years? Yeah, about two years. Yep. Two years. And uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, I think, formed their Dream Theater. Huh, yeah, I've heard of those guys. Yeah, Prague. It was like a, they're from Long Island, but I think they all went to Berkeley. Yeah, I mean, and those guys are together. killer musicians. Oh, Jesus. Dude, their I mean, musicianship is amazing. I love them. I love them. That's awesome. Um, what's, you know, I want to start getting like uh, 
because I'm a kid when it comes to music, you know, and I like having these these cool music conversations. Who's your favorite artist? It's an intriguing question. Um, I'd say probably Bill Withers. Bill That's Withers. the one to go with. I just love his sound. Like, it's just like the, like, whether it's a song like Ain't No Sunshine or Lovely Day. Like, he just has such good songs. Like, it's just. My wife loves Bill Withers. He's, again, like, he's just, he has that, like, chill, like, soul vibe that, like, you just can relax to. Like, he just, he just seems like another, like, I seem like all the musicians that I seem to like are just, like, seem like down-to-earth people. Like, he just seems like he's just a chill guy that happens. I think that, like, he learned, he had a pretty late career. Like, he didn't start, like, playing guitar until his 30s, and then he just happened to hit, so. I mean, that's the beauty about music, man. I mean, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. I mean, it's like that universal language that everybody just gets into. Yeah, and you can just do it for the rest of your life, too. Like, that's one of the one of the only professions that you can just enjoy for the rest of your life absolutely man listen noah it was a pleasure having you in here man you know i enjoyed watching you play for us at the uh, birdhouse challenge i wish you the best of luck on tour you know have a great time doing that and uh you know let's do it again real soon well thank you very much it was great chatting with you and uh thank you again sean for linking us together <laughs> thanks sean <laughs> and uh thank you so much for having me on the show hey Thanks for checking out this episode of Fred Talk. Visit us online on fredtalk.tv and make sure you like this video and subscribe and check out these playlists and all these other crazy videos McCookie wants you to watch. And don't forget, your Uncle Freddy loves you. Peace.